Hey, all my YouTuber friends, welcome back. So, I think today we're gonna do something a little different. Do a short video on the beginning guide, or for the beginner, how to overland. I'm gonna do the truth of what you really need, and not what social media tells you what you need. And then we're gonna go over what really is overlanding. It's kind of uh, something that nobody really even knows nowadays, because some people even think rock crawling rock crawling is overlanding and it's not so let's go over some of this basic stuff what you really really need as a beginner so if you're new just tuning in i'm john i'm 68 years old i live out of my tiny little jeep and i've been i'm on my fourth year full-time overlanding doing america so so my here's some of my tips of just this is really just meant for beginners, not advanced, just if you really want to start out. So obviously, a reliable vehicle. That's probably the most important. You don't want some piece of junk and you could be out in the wilderness where it can break down at any time. So you need something reliable, uh, something preferably with a four wheel drive, not 100% necessary, but it does help. And I would say there's only two modifications that you really need to your vehicle number one is so so important this is so important to have good tires these are mud terrain tires you don't have to get mud terrain tires you just get a good set of all-terrain tires that's in good shape that can hold up to the rough terrain rough rocks and stuff like that that's probably the most important thing and next so you definitely need good traction on the road so the older vehicles like the Jeep and some other vehicles, basically when they say four-wheel drive, it's not four-wheel drive. It's two-wheel drive. So it's basically one wheel in the front, one wheel in the back. Some other companies will put that in, especially the newer vehicles that are $50,000. They're all It's all kind of built in already. But if you have an older vehicle, you want to put lockers in it. You want at least three wheels kind of when you put it in four-wheel drive, three wheels grab it in for it any situation you're at oh yeah and also it's always good to have a good tire repair kit learn how to fix a flat tire that's always useful on the road because you never know so also um being ready for everything any any situation i can't tell you how many times i've been down going down dirt roads and i'll see this little road to the side go down that and i'll go down this road that probably don't even have to put it in four-wheel drive and I just found some great campsite down there. But that night, it rained all night long. It poured, and that road just became absolute mud. So, without four-wheel drive, I'd never make it out of there. And there's also times that, uh, especially up north, when I'm in the, the, the mountain range, I've drive down these mountain roads, and the sun is just shining. It's just a beautiful day, but I can't see on the other side of the mountain. And out of nowhere, within 10 minutes, that storm, which I couldn't see, was on the other side of the mountain. Came over the mountain. I'm in absolute torrential rain. And the road just turns to mud. That's when you're glad you have your four-wheel drive and good tires. Never forget that. So I'm thinking if you have a four-wheel drive already, you probably got high clearance. No need to put a lift on it. Not yet. You can do that later on. Not necessarily. My Jeep here, I do not have a lift on it. I may have maybe a one, one inch, maybe two inch because I got a heavy duty suspension with a lot of weight. So it brings up a little bit, but I'm running stock tires. I don't have big tires on there and I go some crazy places. So one of the things is when you're off road, you, you get out some terrible stuff, but you gotta have common sense. This is the main thing is common sense to look at the road and look at that and go, God, I'm not going down that road and then turn around and be safe. You don't have to do crazy stuff. So I, I see this all the time. Everybody wants to do this crazy trails because on social media, there's so many YouTube channels where these guys got this tricked out big, awesome looking rig going off road and doing crazy stuff. That's not what overlanding is. We'll get to that a little later. You just want to get off road. It's the journey that's more important. Get off road, going down roads that you've never been on before, exploring and having a good time and getting where you want to go. It 
it's not the destination getting there, it's the journey, it's the nature you saw, it's the scenery you saw, and enjoying that whole journey. That's what's so important about being an overlander. All right, a couple of essentials. Recovery gear. Even if you're just carrying a plane, little tow rope like this, bring that with you just in case you have to be towed out or something like that. You have that. Also, it doesn't hurt. Bring your sore. Not like all these uh, like these shows I watch on YouTube. They all got electric chainsaws or gas powered chainsaws. That takes up so much room and expensive. That's all you need. You're only gonna cut a couple trees maybe if it's in the way. And for firewood. Also, a shovel. Oh yeah. If anything you need is a shovel. That helps you if you're stuck in mud or in dirt, shoveling underneath your wheel can definitely help out a lot. And especially when that coffee work, uh, breaks in in the morning and starts acting up, like you got the shovel, head back in the woods and you're good. Another thing, got my traction boards. They're max tracks. So if I do get stuck in mud or anything like that, I can throw these underneath my wheels and I usually can get out. I also use them sometimes I get into situations where I'm on a road and it's washed out. One side is really on a steep edge. I can put that over there and make it into a bridge. It helps me get out. And also I got extra gas can up there. I got a jerry can up there for extra gas. That's pretty important to have with you too. So now when you're going off road, it's pretty important to air down your tires. That helps with, um, it helps with cushions to ride. It, it gives you more traction. And it's also the more flex you have in that tire underneath when you hit a sharp rock, it, it will give underneath the tire. And if it's all full with air and there's a lot of pressure in it, then it will punch, punch it through. But when that air pressure is down, it has a lot more give on these rocks. So to air down, this is all I use. I got this little pocket thing for about $78. It works great. And that's the one thing about social media. And I did this when I first started. I had to buy this thing. Oh, oh how am I going to air down my tires? And I didn't even thought about this. And I bought this thing. And what a pain in the butt. It was expensive. You can, and, and you can buy just to air down your tires. A hundred bucks for these things you screw on. And all kinds of stuff. It, you don't need it. it. That's the whole social media brainwashing everybody. You need this. Do simple. I'm old, I've learned, and I do things simple, very simply, whatever you say. So this works perfect for me. And when I air up, it also, I can tell my air pressure in there. It works fantastic. Also for an air compressor, you need an air compressor to air back up. So there's no need to spend a lot of money on that too, but don't go cheap. So don't go to these air compressors that plug into your cigarette lighter. It's just not gonna right, work right. Just spend a little extra money and get a good presser, compressor that you can attach to your battery. But there's, no, there's also no need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on an air compressor. It's, it all does the same thing. It may take a little longer, but you're overlanding. There's no rush. So you definitely could probably be doing a, a couple of days. So you're gonna do some uh, camping out. So it's, no, it's the same thing. You don't need a lot of money for that. I sleep inside my Jeep. I like being inside. Uh, you can just buy a $150 uh, two-man pup tent. It'll work fine. Everybody's got a basic sleeping bag probably. Just a cheap air mattress and you're camping. That's all you need. And for stoves, any one banner burn a stove. Everybody's probably got a stove somewhere. Borrow a stove cheap Coleman stove, bring that, a couple greenies, little propane bottles, and you're good. And for dishes, paper plates, and for uh, your basically pots and pans, just take something from home. You don't need to go out and buy just something for camping and being on the road. Just get a couple pots and pans from home, put it in a bin, and you're good to go. One thing you should always have, don't forget, a little first aid kit. Wouldn't hurt to have that. And some communications, I have this, uh, in reach so it's a satellite texting so no matter actually no matter where i am in the whole world i can text somebody if i'm in trouble and there's got an emergency button here just in case something really dramatically happened to you so 
Then I have uh, on my iPad, I run uh, Gaia GPS. So it's an app that show, it's got dozens and dozens of different maps of everything, National Geographic maps to special maps. If you're doing the Appalachian Trail, it's got everything on there. You can overlay it, do all kinds of stuff on it. But what it does for me, it tells me if I'm on like BLM land or my state trust land and my forest, you know, forest service roads or lands. So it knows where I can camp and it'll tell me if I'm on private land. So that's pretty important. You don't want to be on private land. You'll get shot at. It's that good. So, but Gaia GPS, I'll show you guys in a minute. It, that's my prime, uh, prime app I use. It's, uh, there's, there is, there is a free version, but to get all the maps, I think it's roughly $40 a year, which is really not that bad. That also gives me locations. I can put a track in that does the track so I can go back to it at a later date. I always mark every time I find a place to camp, I always log that in there so I know where I camped. And so later on, a couple years go by, I know where there's a nice camping spot. So that's pretty cool to have. So this is my Gaia GPS here. And this mark right here, that shows exactly where I am right now. Then it shows this purpose, kind of purple land there. That's state trust land. All this here, grayish, uh, grayish, brownish. That's all uh, BLM land. And anything in the white, like here, that's all private land. So gives you an idea where you're at. So if you're going out for a couple days, you, all you need is a little cooler. You could just go out to the grocery store and buy a fo uh, foam styrofoam uh, cooler and that'll be fine put some ice on there you're only going for a couple days camping that's all you need you don't need a whole fridge yet so i see all these um youtube channels i got all these dramatic dramatic fridges you got to have a dramatic fridge that seems to be the old thing every every kind of damn overlander out there has got a dramatic fridge don't get a dramatic fridge i've had one Bought it for 900 something dollars at an Overland Expo. It lasted me three and a half years. I thought I'm gonna buy something really good. It's gonna last me a long time, but it didn't. And then the customer service absolutely just sucked. Couldn't get anything repaired. The electronics in it went. Then they tell me, oh, it's, it's outdated. They don't make it anymore. So they don't make parts for it anymore. So in the three and a half years, I had to throw it out. Kind of sucks. So now I got a little cheap fridge for $300 that's working a lot, just as good, if not better. Sorry, that's just my little rant. <laughs> also, another thing is important. If you're way up north in, in bear territory, or grizzly territory, bear spray. Wouldn't hurt to carry that along with you. So one day everybody kind of forgets. It's like, they're out there. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I got to take a dump. What do I do? So, well, you got the shovel, but you also can do a bucket and get a, like, a, you can buy a, what's called, it's a privacy tent. It's a little, like, four by four, little pop-up tent for privacy, and you can put a little bucket in it. Just double line it with a trash can liner. You're good to go. When you get back, just roll it all up, put a knot in it, throw it in the garbage, you're good to go. So... I think I covered most of that stuff of what you really need, just the basic, basic stuff. So this is, as you can tell, is very much unscripted. I'm 68. I just decided to throw out a little video, just the simple stuff. I just want people to not get so involved with looking into social media, all the YouTube channels or all these top guys doing crazy stuff. Kind of, this is your journey of what you want to put into your vehicle. Uh, it's cool to have a badass looking vehicle, but it's not important. If you're just doing it to look badass, it's kind of the wrong reasons. But it's just nice to have one. But just Overland is just to get out and enjoy. That's, you know, especially in the beginning. After that, you just get more involved with it. And you can do a lot more stuff. So that's about, I think, all I can cover now. Oh yeah, and there's also one more really, really important thing that every overlander has to have. That's so, so important. But we're going to do that at the end of the video. But right now, I think we're going to get into what really is overlanding. 
that's a really sensitive subject and I know I'm gonna piss off a lot of people but oh well this is just me my thoughts that's all please don't take offense it's just just me so I think I'll just relax here in the back of my uh, Jeep here and finish up here so overlanding is like like I said before it's the journey not the destination it's enjoying as you go down to find a road you've never been on you don't know what that's what's going to happen on that road how good the road is how bad it is it's the unexpected and it is checking out all the scenery the nature the animals everything around it to make it a really cool journey so all you also have now you have off-roading that's enough that's something a little different so off-roading is more four-wheeling kind of rock chlorine doing crazy stuff off-road having a really badass beefed up jeep to do all this stuff and it's just doing a trail it's not all overlanding even though you may camp it for a night you're out there to test your vehicles and you're purposely looking for hard terrain to do so which is not anything to do with overlanding and then you also have uh, rock crawling that's a whole different thing going over big rocks and that's another whole category some people call that overlanding which is absolutely not and then you have car camping which people just go in their car and they'll drive down a road somewhere and just camp for the night and stuff like that which is fine i mean it's awesome people do stuff like that it's still getting out and enjoying so but like i say it's i just see so many rigs that are so badass and you have to have the rooftop tent on there and a big lift and all this stuff. But bottom line is having all that, even with a rooftop tent, you're not, doesn't make you an overlander. That's what it comes down to. You're just off-roading or camping or whatever, unless you're really going down these roads and exploring. But there's too many people that build their rigs out and they do all kinds of stuff, spend thousands and thousands of dollars to do stuff on the Jeep. And they don't go anywhere and they call themselves overlanders you're not an overlander okay now let's get to the most important important thing anybody has to have if you're just a beginner overlander to an extreme overlander here is the one thing you definitely need hang on a minute okay everybody most important thing i mean absolutely most important thing can't do overlanding without that it is good beer so oh baby this is good stuff so this is from the tombstone brewery here in arizona it's an imperial stout and it's at 15.5 percent alcohol oh this is good stuff so let's open this bad boy up oh yeah my glass this stuff is like mud Oh, it is black. Awesome. Ugh. Let's try this out. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is so good. Oh, the heavens have shined down on me. So, huh, that's good. So, I want to thank everybody for sticking around. Hope you gained something from it. Got any questions? Leave it in the comments. I'll get back to you. And hit the subscribe button if you enjoy what you see so far. We do a lot of stuff, off-roading, simple stuff. And also hit that bell. I mean, the like button. That helps me out a lot getting uh, this channel promoted a little bit more. So, so don't forget, never stop listening to rock and roll. Never stop exploring. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.